this idea that we're supposed to be happy all the time or we're supposed to be look that that being in shape is, even looks a certain way or being healthy is a certain thing is a lot of it is marketing <laughs> yeah and and capitalism fair. and and social conditioning that's just not fair you're listening to let's get stabby i'm your host lauren andrews join me as we poke holes in the patriarchy by sharing the stories of badass women founders Tune in to hear directly from these unicorns who are using their businesses to make the world a better place. If you're wanting more sisterhood and solidarity in your life, I'd like to invite you to join our next magic hour. You can learn more at unicornexchange.com slash events. Without further ado, let's get stabby. Hey everyone, I am here with Cass Giorsi. She is a mind-body integration coach, seasoned movement teacher, body reader, and the founder of Midline, a methodology to help you discover your core essence. Ooh, I'm so excited to dive into this. She has been teaching for 17 years and has been growing her business steadily over the past five. She's a mother to two and she comes from us from Michigan. Cass, thank you so much for being here today. I am so excited to dive into Midline. I'm so happy to be here, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Yes. So I think you have such an interesting story around alignment in your business. Whenever we talked before, you had mentioned that you were kind of a yogi before it was cool and trendy, that you've kind of grown up in this <laughs> lifestyle, which is so rare. But at one point you found that you were pretty unhappy, kind of, it sounded like if I'm remembering correctly, it was like the rise of yoga in the US. You were a private teacher in Manhattan, you were killing it and you were just not happy though. Is that right? Yes, very much. I mean, it takes a lot of work to, um, to teach private, to teach, to, you know, launch a business, manage life in New York city. And I was kind of going off of someone else's compass. I think I, I wasn't really sure what my true North was. And, um, I was just sort of taking any clients I could get. Mm. I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't really feel dialed into my mission yet and um I was coming at it from my love of biomechanics and the understanding of the body and my own spiritual practice but nothing was really in alignment so I felt a little disjointed and discouraged because you know you gotta hustle to make it in New York City and it it was the very early days of Facebook and social media and so people were building online brands. And I was like, how are you building? (laughs) I just felt like I was in a constant sprint. So Um, so, whose compass were you going off of? You mentioned that you were just kind of following someone else's lead. What was that? Yeah, that's, so I I guess it was really, as I said, it was sort of the first initial early 2000s when people were becoming brands. And I had teachers or people that I admired who who I watched their stars rising, so to speak, as Mm. people who were just really great teachers and had quote unquote followings. And that appealed to me. And yet I sort of was rejecting it too. So I'm a joiner. I'm like a joiner. And I'm also like the very rebel. rebel. Exactly. So if there was, so I, I don't know, I certainly had people I admired, uh, teachers that I admired. I don't know that I admired them as people so much as I admired them. (laughs) Not to be rude or disrespectful, but I was more inclined to like, I kind of want what she's having sort of thing. I I want a career, at least on paper or on the surface, it looked really appealing. And I was, you know, it was a long road. <laughs> it felt like yeah. a, it felt like a long distance from where I was standing that I would ever be in their shoes, even though I was t- not entirely sure I wanted to be in their shoes. I was really conflicted. All I knew was that I was happiest and most in my joy and purpose when I was teaching people. That's one. That's mm-hmm. one. That's one place I knew wasn't uh, questionable. At, at least I had that. By the grace of God, I had that. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah. interesting because I feel like this is a lesson that so many people that are starting their businesses find. It's that they have a goal and they know what they love to do, but how do I make a life 
lifestyle living out of this one thing. And, oh, look, here's all these other people who are doing it. I should be doing what they're doing when really it's so funny. I was actually just listening to, um, Rachel Rogers podcast Mm -hmm. of, um, how she got her publishing deal. And, um, it was with her publisher from Harper Collins. And she was talking about how, you know, we're really looking for someone who really embraces their own unique voice. And, you know, we've had so many Rachel Hollis types come out after she was a bestseller and we love right. Rachel, but we won't want another Rachel Hollis. Right. So, right. And I, I find that this is kind of a mass mistake that mm. entrepreneurs are making is that Ooh. they don't have like that confidence in their selves to just do your own fucking thing well, um, yeah. or even know what that is, you know, kind of finding out, okay, wait, what is my voice versus all the bullshit that's going on? Yeah. So I'm really curious, what was that aha moment for you? When were you like, okay, I'm chasing this kind of going after this model, but this is not me. <laughs> this isn't bringing me happiness. Well, I'm, I'm just settling into that time. I would say I'm there right now. So, yes. cause I feel yes. I'm at a, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. I feel I'm at a, a real turning point in my, not just in my business, but in my, in my mission and the, the beautiful part and what feels what what I feel really grateful for is that that hasn't changed. My mission has always sort of been the same. What's your mission? Well, my mission is certainly to create a space, right, to a non-prescriptive space where people themselves can find and trust the feeling of um, sustainability and structure and stability within themselves through their body as it also translates into to use the overused word mindset or the landscape of their mind, I'll say, or the narrative or the storyline going on there, as well as their connection to spirit and not have these three things be separate entities of each other, but to make a whole person. And I know that's like mind, body, spirit, right? That's like the sacred trinity. But I have to ask you again, like you, the proverbial you, is it the sacred trinity? Because we seem to have lost it somewhere along the line. So let's get it back. So I I'm love that. So your real mission that. is getting that sacred trinity back to the yeah. people that you encounter. Yeah, um, as defined by them. You yeah. know, I you know bringing sort of modern spirituality to the fold and to the conversation. Um, and okay, so what I mean by that? So so you mentioned my early days, which weren't that long ago, that I was identifying as a yoga teacher. Mm-hmm. And I was, I have well over 500 hours of teacher training. I'm a, I'm a seasoned teacher. I've been doing it a long, long time. And I know a lot before about it was body cool. before it was cool. <laughs> I was doing it in the nineties, um, the 1990s that is. <laughs> um, and I, I have students who listen to this, who have been doing it since the seventies and so on. So who am I? But, um, I love it. I, yeah. But I don't, you know, I, I realized like about four years ago, what I was teaching was not necessarily yoga. And, and I was, it was, a, it's an easy identity. People know what it is. They know what that means. I sit in front of a room Digestible. and I lead people. Yeah. Exactly. They have a picture in their mind. They have an assumption that they make, but I don't like people making assumptions. I don't make assumptions and I don't want to, I don't want, and I want my work. I want my work to stand out on its own. Because it is, it's its own entity. Our midline is its own thing. It's not just a, it's just not just an alignment cue. How right? does it differ from yoga? Would you say, what are the main points that midline differ from traditional yoga in the U S okay. Good Western question. Yoga. Great, great <laughs> question. Well, I'll start by saying it's certainly influenced because I, as the curator of the methodology, as it were, come from 25 years of practicing. So I'm not about to stand here and say that I don't do downward facing dog or standing forward bend or pigeon pose or these sort of child's pose certainly, but um, they're they're mixed and sort of deconstructed. The asana itself is not really taught as asana. It's, It's part of the functionality of the body mixed with more functional movement bio-intelligence, 
fascia, work around the fascia, connective tissue, um, inspired by a fusion of my own studies throughout the year. Certainly a little bit of dance and cardio is a part of it that's really playful. No we way. Dance. Oh yeah, of course. We have to, the body loves it, you know. I don't know. I mean, so many students, they just kept getting injured. I kept getting injured. All this yoga practice, this repetition, chaturanga and jump forward and jump back. And it got into power and power yoga. And it just felt all too far away from me, not just in the body mechanics, but culturally. And that's where another piece where Midline is, is, is my own platform because I don't speak in Sanskrit, I don't make reference to Hinduism. I am not Hindu. I, I don't make reference so much to the sacred texts of the yoga tradition as one should as a yoga teacher. Um, that's not where I'm coming from. So I make references to other writers, poets, thinkers, you know, um, music, these sorts of things that feel a little bit closer to my own heritage. I'm a, Celtic, Irish, Italian. I was raised in a Catholic family. I'm no longer Catholic, but I'm deeply, deeply, deeply spiritual. And so I want to be in a space when I teach and I make reference to God and that feels appropriate. Um, yeah. These sorts of things. I don't end my class with namaste. I don't, I don't appreciate the way that word has been grossly misused and slandered. I feel it's culturally insensitive and I want to get as far away from that as I can. I think as a practitioner, as a teacher, as a person who holds spaces for healing, I want people to feel seen and I want people to feel safe in my spaces, you know, yeah. you know, um, and, and not, so it's not such a departure from my own cultural background because I can only make reference to what I know yeah. in my body and my family and my experience. I can't make assumptions about other things. So I love that. You're so passionate yeah. about this. It just shines through and I just feel like I could listen forever. I oh, do goodness. want to Thank kind you. of go, I know I interrupted when you were talking about this, but I do want to go back to that aha moment of, oh, I'm out of alignment. How do I get back in alignment with yeah. what's true to me? Just kind of what you were just talking about of, I can only speak to what I've experienced and who I am and how did, yeah. how did that even come to be? How did you snap out of that? I'm not going to be like these other yoga celebrities yeah. that are borderline appropriation, sometimes mm. maybe, and I'm going to do what mm. I'm going to do. How did you choose that? Well, I, it was a, it's a long road, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's always. a long road always. Um, but I, and I, I realized that I was, um, kind of out of my integrity in this sense that I was maybe chasing the, the money a little bit, chasing the, the dollars, like what's going to make me the most money. And that never works. <laughs> I know we want it to work. Or don't work, or work. So bad. Oh, Isn't it supposed so, to be easy? Just kidding. I know. Right. <laughs> I know. That's, and, and, you know, I would, if I, sometimes I think if I could, I would leave this entrepreneur track, but I can't, it won't leave me alone. Honestly. Midline will not leave me alone. She just wants to be in the world. And so some days I just surrender and I say, okay, all right, okay. But to answer your question, I do want to answer it because I think that it's an important, it's an important one. I think the first thing that I can say is that when I was one of my many confused states about what I was meant to be doing and where I was meant to be putting my energy as a mother of young children, especially, I felt like, you know, time was of my, was my greatest mm. uh, resource. And I, it was running, I was running out of it. I had a very dear friend just look me in the eye and say, look, <clears throat> you're a teacher. That's who you are. It's what you do best. It's who you are. It's who you are to me. She happened to be a student of mine too, but she's also since become a dear friend. And that really just like, not only did it help me exhale, but it was like, okay, you're right. I I'm a teacher. Let me do what I love and do it mm -hmm. the best way that I can. Um, and teach how I want to teach and say what I want to say when I teach it and um, study as much as I want. You know, I, I, I'm still very much a student always and always asking for guidance around that with from, from people much older than me, way more seasoned, way more experienced. That's super important. Um, 
but I have to say, like when it comes to just owning my own identity as an entrepreneur and, and following my own compass, um, I had to let go a lot of the illusions that I had around who other people were and the assumptions that I was making about what they thought of me. I had to let all that fall away, just really like discard, like just leaving, you know, just leaving these sort of dead flowers on the, on the floor and walking away from them, you know, because it just, it, it was not serving me. And it was, I was outsourcing my confidence. I was outsourcing my joy. I was outsourcing my courage. I was outsourcing my voice. I was muting myself because I assumed everyone else was talking about what I was talking about. And the truth is they're not because yeah. I, because it, they can't, because they're not me and I'm not them. So true. And it's just, it's, there's so much disillusionment around what it looks like and what's correct and how it's supposed to go. And the other thing was I was chasing money because I thought it was gonna give me something more than I already had. When then I started to look, kind of look around and I was like, wait a minute, I kind of have what I want here. What, 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 am I, what exactly am I chasing after? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm building a business with many missions in mind, one of which is to build wealth and to you know, support my family. And of that's course. part of my mission. I'm very, and I'm very proud of my ambition. I'm not scared of it anymore. Um, but it's not running the show. What's running the show is just how can what I know get to the right people so that they can mm -hmm. feel better in their lives. It's a holistic approach. It's serving all mm -hmm. your missions, not just one. Anymore. Yes. Yes. That's very much so, so amazing. Very much so. Yeah. Whenever you talk about how midline's not going to leave you and it's a, well, actually taking it a step back, you had mentioned that your friend said you're a teacher and you really took that to heart before that, were you rejecting that label or was there something about that, that you weren't accepting? And what, what was that? Why weren't you okay with that? Um, well, I'm, I was judging it, frankly. Um, I had a belief that you couldn't make a million dollars and be a movement teacher. I'm, right. a, I'm out to prove that wrong. I'm really working to dispel that myth. Someone said I, it's a myth. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm on my hero's journey to, uh, I'm sure that I know that there are movement teachers out there doing very well. <clears throat> I won't be the first. Um, I was rejecting it because it felt limited. You know, it didn't feel valid enough. Um, I heard a lead singer of one of my favorite bands long ago say he felt that of this rock band, you know, one of the one of the best rock rock bands ever, Eddie Vedder saying as a part of Pearl Jam, he thought the singing was kind of second, second, secondary to the rock and roll. I only use that as a metaphor because I felt like, <clears throat> you know, somebody like Eddie Vedder can belittle his voice and the importance of his singing in those songs. I'm doing the same thing with something that is actually very potent. And not that I'm comparing myself to a great rock and roll star, but just why to not? Say, well, hey, why not? But what I'm saying, what I mean is, it's an, it, it's it's enough. Yeah, teacher. I don't also have to be all these other things. I can be this, and I can be really good at that, and be proud of that, and not have to explain it. Really, mm -hmm. you know, I I, I I I don't know if I answered that well. <laughs> yeah, no, actually you, you really kind of created an aha moment for me to where I feel like some of our gifts and who we are at our core and who we're designed to be can be so close to us all of our life to where we naturally belittle it because we're so comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And we really see it as something restrictive instead of expansive. Like you mm -hmm. have, you know, you're like, I'm a teacher, which you could have just let that restrict you to the bubble of I'm going to be in a studio working an hourly job for some huge ass studio that I hate mm -hmm. that doesn't have my values. And this is going to be my bubble because that's what a teacher is. But instead you broke it open and you let it be an expansive guide to mm -hmm. say, okay, how can I teach in so many different forms? And I think a lot of people, I think that goes back to what we were talking about earlier to where it's, okay, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is what I love. Let me see what other people's containers that they've kind of broken open in playgrounds they've made for themselves that I can also create and just kind of borrow instead of really doing what you did, which was create your own damn thing. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, that's very well said, Lauren. Thank you. And you, you, that's and and that's what I mean. Like some days I, I I would leave it alone, but it won't leave me alone. Midline does feel like a methodology. <clears throat> it took me 15 years to find the voice first, mm -hmm. the confidence of that. Um, but but the action, but moving this way feels so good in my own body that I thought this is, there's something, there's something to here. That. There just have is something to this. Have you read Big Magic? By, I have, uh, I have, I have, yes. Uh, I love, I mean, actually one of the most like impactful things that I read in 2019 was from there. And she talked about how ideas are like host are, are there, they're like a uh, spiritual entities and they're searching the world, looking for a host to actually bring them to life. And that's what this reminds me of to where it's just mm. like, it's bugging you. It's not leaving you alone. And I think if anyone's listening and they have that idea that won't leave them alone, there's something mm. to it. And maybe mm -hmm. you are yourself by giving it this label of saying, you're just a teacher. You're just a yeah. A right planner. you're just stay whatever it might be right. try flipping that and see what happens do you have any advice to anyone that's listening that you know maybe they're saying well I'm just uh and they're restricting themselves like mm. you did gosh I I would love advice like that I think that that's I'm still trying to figure it out I, I, I can't I can't be shy about that I have to be very transparent about it um I think it's a, I think it's a never ending thing though, too. I think once you have this idea, it, it's going to evolve and it's going to grow because it's not just a stagnant thing. Right. So I think, no, it's a living, constant. yeah, it's, it's a like living, a breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. much like mine's, you know, midline started with, um, this is going to sound so on the nose, but it's true. It started with like understanding the power of the exhale. Um, how your intercostal muscles and your soft inner body muscular tissue contract at the very, very, <clears throat> excuse me, bottom of an exhale. I think everyone and listening just like did a deep <laughs> exhale like I did. I'm take like, a deep breath. What do you mean? Exhale <laughs> all the way to the bottom. Breathe out all the way. I'll keep going, keep going, keep going. And when you feel the base of that exhale, those are your lowest rib cage um, bones and muscles there <laughs> that are cinching around your waist. Now we don't want to live there, right? That's a contracted um, space. However, that's where our power is and that's where our core really turns on. And our core connective tissue lives in our, and is governed by our breathing. And so when I was teaching women this, at oh. a very, yeah. You, so that's you literally where your muscles, all your core it's muscles. It's the beginning. Everything. Oh, that's it. It's that's not where they all are there, but that's the beginning of understanding breath centered core uh, engagement, engagement mm. for strength and um, stability in the body, not six pack. I'm talking whole circumferential stability from your pubis to your collarbones. Using breath work. Using your to breath. To create stability in your core. Yes, in your core by way of your ribs, your diaphragm, your pelvic diaphragm, because it's a pelvic diaphragm, not a floor, in case anybody's wondering. Uh, it's not a floor, it's a diaphragm. It breathes just like your upper diaphragm does. And, but what I rem but what I remember when I was teaching, I was, had a small baby and I was teaching like 10 classes a week. I was really tired, but I was, <laughs> I realized just how much we are holding our breath in, in, we breathe in, we breathe in, we breathe in, we breathe in. And then we're talking up like this and no, everything's fine. I'm fine. No, I, yeah. I'm good because we're in our upper register. We actually have an exhale to get down into our bodies and you know is it terry mcmillan she was onto something waiting for waiting to exhale is actually a real thing we're constantly breathing breath in especially women because we're in anticipation and we're we're bringing life in all the time and we don't really have the mechanics or the understanding of how to just be in our bodies 
well enough to really allow for our body to exhale all the way before we take another breath in. Because it's a cycle. We don't want to be holding our breath in any one direction. But when we can start feeling the relationship of our breath and our stability in our bodies, that translates into our lives. It translates into our relationships. It translates into our posture, how we hold ourselves, how, how things feel when we wear them. And it's not about aesthetic, although that's fun too, or physique. I mean, that's fun and playful, but that's not what this is. This is, this is a deep center connection to your vitality, which is literally one breath away. It's not, it's not outside of you at all. Yeah. That's so interesting. I still catch myself holding my breath, especially if I'm doing, I've noticed lately, if I'm doing a task that Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy, Mm -hmm. I'll just all of a sudden, you know, deep sigh. Oh, wow. How long have I been holding my breath? Yeah. Why did I forget to breathe? Isn't that supposed to be natural? (laughs) Do you have any advice for people like me who still find themselves, or maybe this is the first time they're hearing this and they're like, oh, wait, I'm not the only one who forgets to breathe. (laughs) I think it's more common than um, recognized, honestly, that a lot of people, they just forget to breathe. If you catch yourself doing deep sighs, you know, and you're just like, oh, wait, you're inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. What, how do you start to reverse those patterns? Any suggestions? Oh my goodness. Um, I could say a lot of things about that. I'm going to just keep it simple for your listeners. The first thing I would say was that to take the five seconds, five to 20 seconds that it takes to pause and just become aware of yourself in in the sense of like, I'm a body, I have hands. There's my chest, it rises when I inhale and it softens when I exhale. We've been sort of conditioned to not do that. We feel like if we slow down enough to do things like that, we're gonna somehow lose the grip that we think we have. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have to question the conditioning of just how fast we're moving in in the sense that we're actually not able to breathe. I think that would be the first thing that one would wanna unpack. And then simple things like, I like to um, breathe into my feet. Like I like to picture that I had nostrils in my feet so that when I inhale, it comes up through my feet. Cause then that travels through my, I know it's playful, <laughs> right? Um, another, another, yeah, it is fun. Or if you're, it's really, I did that when I was waitressing all those years, like breathe into your feet. People would feel tired and complain. And I'd be like, just breathe into your feet. It'll make you feel like you're floating. Um, and it does, it really does help. But I would say, so the first thing I would say is just take the time. It doesn't even have to be longer than a minute to just pay attention and feel your own physical presence because the body is listening. It's talking to us all day long and we're just not we're not listening to it. We're we're just ignoring it. We're bypassing it. And then we wonder why we're sick, why we can't sleep, why we can't poop, why, why we're thirsty all the time, why we're tired all the time. I mean, oxygen and CO2 are crucial for our aliveness. They're crucial for everything from our hypertension, blood pressure, to our depression, to our PMS, to you name it, it's there. It's as everything, it all can be traced back to your breath. And then the, the second thing would be, you know, to make sure that you you move in a way that feels um, freeing, that you take a walk, that you get outside, that you, and it sounds so pedantic, but it's true. Just like, make sure you separate yourself from whatever task you're having to do that you feel like you can't breathe until, until yeah. it's done. And then the third thing would be to come take a midline class. Yes. <laughs> and, I to, love and to that. learn. <laughs> and to I learn. That it's it's interesting that like being able to create different spaces. That's something I've been playing with. Um, transitioning from, you know, work to play to whatever mm. I want to like get out of work mode. Um, my boyfriend had mentioned that one of their customers, they have a um a company where they their main product is handcrafted singing bowls from Nepal and mm. um one of their ambassadors would made a video talking about how they actually 
use the bowl to transition and create an actual energy and just a sound Mm. space because you know this last year she's mom she's teacher she's business owner she's all these different roles and so she'll like actually play her bowl and to kind of transition between those different roles and really Mm. be able to to turn off that busyness to be more present. And I was like, oh, that's a really, that's a great one. And that's, that's a really important point because we have very, we have lost our transitions. There is no separation. So you, you, that's a beautiful example of how we can do that. But the body needs transitions. You know, we used to walk out to the driveway, get into the car, drive the car, yeah. walk across the parking lot, go up in the elevator. You know, all the things that we used to do just to take three minutes out, just to be passive in the moment. Um, but I wanted to say, because I know that some of your listeners might be hearing this and think, but I don't want to slow down. I don't like meditating. I don't want to do that sort of thing. And I really want to honor that because there's nothing wrong with any with someone if they don't want to move slowly. I think that we've been fed the wrong information that we have to sit still in order to feel calm, that can actually make a lot of people feel very agitated and make their anxiety feel worse. And that's because their nervous system is in a different mode. So I would also suggest that if it's not sitting and breathing and being slower or breathing into your feet, although I highly recommend that for everybody, um, you know, doing something like a, a nice little bounce on your heels or even a few, I love jumping jacks or like anything that kind of, or dancing, certainly. I mean, I'm all about the dancing, put on a music and dance, anything to kind of help you feel yourself and get out of breath, whether you're out of breath or in your breath, it doesn't matter. You're going to be aware of your breath. And that's really mm. the most important part. So I just wanted to write, to make sure that I mentioned both sides of that so great because it's not again midline is not about yoga it's it's many different ways of moving so as yeah totally all kinds that's so great I really really love that I really like thank you for saying that as someone who doesn't like to sit still yeah you might not actually you know midday whenever you know it's around this time I'm about to transition um into shutting my computer off the last thing I want to do is sit still I've been sitting here totally all day totally what a great piece of advice time to dance I actually have been doing like a, a 30 day of dance like challenge for myself to where yeah. I, like, dance every day so oh I want your, I want your great playlist you out there <laughs> good playlist you probably don't want my playlist it's like full of 90s music and I christmas do. music <laughs> it's a shit show <laughs> but i love it so fun so, fun. so I, we're getting close to time i i would love to you for you to just talk a bit more about midline and your methodology and really what that is because like you mentioned like it's not just yoga or breath work or dance like it's, it's, is midline, does that come from because of this core? Like I'm imagining like your midline is your core. Is that why? It is. Well, that's where it comes from. Midline is a, an alignment cue in like a Pilates or yoga class, but your midline ah. runs from top to bottom and it's the center channel of your body. So I see it in, in many different ways. Everything has a midline, right? The earth has a midline with its axis. Homes have a midline. Um, bridges have a, have a midline, lives, businesses, m- symphonies, they all have a center channel. They all have something that draws them to itself. It draws you to yourself. So I use midline as a cue, right, to draw to, to center for the biomechanics and the way that the body moves. But it's also what brings you and to the feeling of centeredness in yourself and in your life. But with regard to the movement methodology, so that people have an idea, in the span of 45 minutes, we might start with like a seven minute little dance cardio just to get warm and feel the beat, right? And then there might be, we might get down on the ground then when we're nice and warm and do some breath centered core. So using the breath, both inhale and exhale to stoke the core muscles, anything from like bicycles and Jane Fonda style to internal and external rotation of the hips, getting the glutes going, like understanding the strength of the triceps, like really breaking down how to do a push up safely or how to do mountain climbers safely. We might go into some burpees or something. And then there'll be like, and you know, a nice alignment based 
hatha yoga moment where you're doing a triangle pose or you're um, combining a triangle pose with a core move, something like that. And then you might be down on the floor again, resting. And then we finish with some quiet time, you know, five or 10 minutes of guided meditation. That's just an example. It's not always that, but I like to keep it really loose because I want, I'm doing it too. And I want to be able to have the freedom. Do what you want to do. I love what I want that day. Um, How in shape do you need to be for this? Well, I teach all levels. I have taught all ages. I, um, I definitely encourage people to modify. I think being in shape is um, a state of mind. Um, I don't want anyone getting hurt. That's for sure. But I also want people to trust themselves, to learn to trust themselves and to know and learn the distant, the difference between resistance and injury, because there's mm. a difference and we need to go to our edge just a little bit sometimes to understand it. We don't need to live there, but we do need to go there sometimes, whether it's cardio that's going longer than you want it to or a hold that's going longer than you want it to, or a meditation that's going longer than you want it to. There's an edge there. That's where you find, that's where you can meet yourself. So dude, I feel like so interesting. Um, I know this is the second time we've spoke, but I didn't realize that it's really almost like a fitness class, but I feel like you're almost revolutionizing fitness classes because it's not about getting in shape or losing weight. It's about actually being healthy in a holistic manner. And from what you just described, I'm like, oh, wow, this is like really revolutionary. Someone like me to where I'm just like, I really don't care yeah. about like doing this, like P90X, like I'm going right. to results, blah, blah, blah. Like I just want to, yeah. because I understand now how important movement is. And I don't want to like constantly, like you said, be on that line of pushing that resistance past mm, to this like right. unhealthy place. So I, right. I just really, I love this. Oh my God. Thank you. Um, Thank you. My last you. question was going to be, how do you feel like this is changing the world and what you're doing is really making an impact, which I feel like you just said, but I'd love to hear your words. Well, I mean, just anything that I can do to help people understand and love the body they were given that all yeah. bodies are important, no matter the shape, the quote unquote ability level, mm-hmm. um, any, anything and everything really matters here. And I, I just wanna help people fall in love with their bodies and to trust themselves. I know that's a long road and it's a tall order. And I don't, I don't pretend to just sit here and say that a 45 minute class can be revolutionary for somebody. But what I do try to do is add language to it so that um, more than anything, people feel seen. They feel seen in their humanity. They feel seen in their struggles. They feel seen in their pain because it's not easy to be human. I mean, it's just not. And this idea that we're supposed to be happy all the time or supposed to be looking, that that being in shape even looks a certain way or being healthy is a certain thing is a lot of it is marketing. (laughs) Yeah. And and capitalism and and social conditioning, that's just not fair. And I, I wanna help people so they don't feel like they're gonna get hurt. You know, everyone complains about their backs and their necks. And I mean, evolution is not working in our favor if you wanna know the truth. So I've gotta do a little bit there um, to help the human body form and how it shapes, but really just so that people feel that they, that they can experience even just a moment of the sort of beauty that they are just as they are and Mm, that they feel good. I want people to feel good. I want people to feel, I want people to feel in their bodies so that they're not so entrenched in their mind. You know, Mm. we've got a whole other part of us that is desperate to express itself if we would just listen. Yeah. And if anyone is listening and you are looking for movement and you're looking to get that spark of happiness that Cass is talking about. She actually is launching a fully integrated virtual studio on February 1st. So this will release a few weeks after that it's been live. Can you tell us a bit more about the virtual studio and how they can get access to your classes right from their laptop? 
right from your laptop, right from your phone. Um, well, my, mid, my, my website is findyourmidline.com and there you'll be able to read a little bit more about my work, but also you'll have a link to my virtual studio. On, in the studio, you'll have, there's a video library for all members, a monthly membership where you'll have classes ranging from five minutes to 60 minutes from breath work, guided meditation to core centric cardio to even uh, the occasional yoga class um, that you might find interesting or restorative yoga class. So I do teach a lot of different things and um, there'll be courses, there's private lessons, private coaching on there. Um, that's, that's where it'll be. I'm very, very excited about it. Amazing. Findyourmidline.com. You can also follow Cass on Instagram. That is at Cass Giorsi, which is spelled G H I O R S E. Again, that's Cass Giorsi, G H I O R S E. Cass, thank you so, so much for being here. This was such a great conversation, and I love hearing your mission and what you're doing, and really how you're revolutionizing fitness in my opinion. We'll see. Well, thank you, Lauren. Thank you for your insights and your thoughtful questions. I love talking to you. You bet. All right, everyone. Till next time. Remember, our next magic hour is coming up. So make sure you've RSVP'd. Head over to unicornexchange.com slash events. You can also find today's show notes there on the website under podcast, unicornexchange.com slash podcast. Can't wait to talk with you soon. Until the next episode, keep it stabby, unicorns.